Hi, I hope you've played a few games on 9x9, you're familiar with the rules and now you're ready to make the next step and start playing on 13x13. In this course we'll learn a lot of important fundamental principles of Go that apply on a board of any size. So once you move on to the standard 19x19, you'll be fully prepared. A game on a 9x9 board is one big tactical fight. Now that the board is bigger, it gains another strategic dimension. It becomes more complex, but more exciting at the same time. Now, when you're looking at this empty board of possibilities, you might start asking questions like, where do I begin? Which point should I choose? Why are we doing this? To answer some of these questions, let me show you this example first. Here you can see three territories made by black. They're the same shape and the same size, nine points, but something is different. Which one do you think was easier to make? Let's see. In order to make this territory in the corner, black needed six stones. To make this one on the side, black needed nine. And to make this one in the center, black had to use 12 stones. Now, why is that? It's quite simple because both sides of the board are helping black make this territory in the corner. Here, one side is helping black. And in the center, it's more difficult because the center is open from every direction. So why can approach and reduce and invade from anywhere, not to mention that it takes more stones. A similar principle is sometimes used when building cities. So sometimes a city will be founded next to a river or a sea, so that the river will serve as a natural protection against the enemy. A logical principle follows from here. Corners, sides, center. So typically players will start with placing their stones in the corners, because it's easier to build territory there. After that, they will switch to the sides, and only after the corners and the sides have been taken will they start building something in the center, where it's more difficult, of course. This corner-side-center principle doesn't work every time. It's not an absolute panacea, but it's a very good guiding star in the ocean of possibilities at the beginning of the game. So we have to start with the corners, but where exactly? The corners are huge. Which point do we pick? Let's start with the most obvious one and play in the corner, like this. This is a serious contender for the most useless move at the beginning of the game. We're trying to surround territory, and this move doesn't make any territory at all. At the same time, it only has two liberties, so it's going to be very easy for your opponent to capture it. So let's play a little bit farther away from the corner, like this. It's not quite obvious how much territory we're taking now, so let's add a couple more stones to it. Like this, and like this. Now with three stones, we've surrounded one point of territory. That doesn't sound very good. So in general, we should try to stay away from the first and second lines at the beginning of the game, unless it's absolutely necessary. I'm going to show you three moves that you can use on any board, on 9x9, on this one, and on 19x19. So the first move is this. 3-3. Three, three. Sometimes you'll hear it being called Sun Sun, which literally means 3-3 three, three in Japanese. A lot of beginners are scared that their opponent can attack, approach, and take the corner away from them. If you're feeling like this, then you should probably try this move. It's very safe, solid, and secure. And it doesn't matter how wide approaches this corner, you can always keep it. But the territory probably won't be very big. If you're feeling more adventurous, then the second move is probably the opposite of this one which is even farther away from the corner. 4-4. Four, four. Notice that it's placed on this dot. This dot is called Hoshi in Japanese, which means a star. So sometimes in English, this point is also referred to as a star point. This move is very ambitious. It's directed towards the center. It can attack, it can build walls. But at the same time, if at any point white invades the corner, and white probably will, then white will take the corner away from you, and black will get a wall that he can use to create some potential territory elsewhere. So this move doesn't really guarantee you the corner. If it bothers you, then maybe you shouldn't play it. The first experiments with this move started in the first half of the 20th century, and now, today, this move is probably the most popular move in modern Go. You will see it in almost every opening of every professional player's game. <coughs> So 
So if you're feeling bold, adventurous, and you want to try and experiment, then try this move in your games. But if you're scared that you can lose your corner territory, well, maybe you should try the next move, which is somewhat a golden mean between the 3-3 and the 4-4. It's 3-4, like this, or symmetrically, like this. 3-4 is an absolute classic. It was played for generations, for centuries and centuries by professional players. And well, it's quite deserved, because this move is also quite territorial. So if your opponent approaches, you can always keep the corner territory if you want, but it's more flexible. And you can always shift to something else. You can try and attack, you can build the outside, and also, for example, in combination with this move, with only two stones, you're getting the whole corner. This corner is sometimes called a corner without problems, because with only two stones, you're getting this whole thing, and it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to invade and steal it from you. So 3-4 is a classic. It's not very simple, but it's quite flexible and interesting. Now, if both players follow the corner side center principle, a game might start, for example, like this. Black takes one of the corners. White takes this one. Another one. Oh, and by the way, where do you think white should play next? Have you thought of maybe playing here or here? No, no, no. Whenever you see an empty corner, you should take it without hesitation. Four moves, four corners taken. This is how 99% of Go games would start. Next, black can strengthen the corner like this, and white could do the same thing with this corner, for example. And now, with the next move, Black can invade the left side and approach the upper left corner at the same time, like this. And some kind of fight would begin from here, but we'll talk about that some other time. And now let's see what happens if one of the players decides not to follow this principle. Let's say that instead of an empty corner, Black starts the game from the center. And White takes the corner, as usual. And now, instead of going for uh, the corners again, Black starts taking the sides and another corner from white, side, corner, side, another corner, side, and maybe white encloses one of the corners to strengthen it. It's quite difficult to say how much territory black has at this point, because black's territory in the center is open from all four sides. And it's going to be very difficult for black to defend this territory and close it at the same time. White at this point has all four corners, and also one of the corners is already strengthened. So white is definitely ahead on territory in this game. Corners, side, center. It sounds very simple, doesn't it? And yet, to follow this principle, it takes quite a bit of experience. So try this in your games. Take the corners first and then go for the sides. If you do that, you'll be off to a good start in the game of Go. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.